Hello and welcome to this new things I've learned this week. I did a little more recording and this concept just was so interesting to me that I wanted to make a little video and go deeper into it. Let's not waste any time. The exercise was just finding, well, the majority element in an array. What does that mean? It means that this element appears more than half the times in the array. If the array is 10 elements, it appears 6 times. If it's 20 elements, it appears at least 11 times, etc, etc. Uh, lead code had many examples for this. Some of them had interesting stuff I want to showcase just to remember them and maybe come back to them or remember that I can use that solution. But what I want to go through is the Boyer-Moore algorithm, which is uh, an algorithm that's meant to find the majority element in the list, like for a vote where there is inherently always a majority element okay so uh, because we have all those stuff and this there's multiple um, codes i want to showcase we're going to jump right into it so let's start with something pretty basic and just do a list comprehension this is from lit code and i wouldn't have thought of doing this so uh, I wanted to showcase it here. Um, I have a little like snippet of arrays here just to showcase different variations of the of the the exercise. Those three first arrays have a majority element. Here it's three. Here it's two, and here it's one. But here you don't have a majority element okay and this is interesting because of later purposes so let's go with this list comprehension first you want to say you want to find the count okay that you're going to follow up what is this count where it's your uh, value your, the check value to say this is a majority element and what is that value well it's half the length of the array if your array is 10 elements, then this is going to be equal to 4. So if an element appears more than 5 times, well, sorry, if the array is 10, then match count is equal to 5. And if the, if the element appears more than 5 times, it's a majority element. And then what you're going to do is for every element in your array, you're going to set a variable count, which is equal to the sum of 1, for every element in array okay this is not the same as your i it's a new count a new iteration through the array if x equal to i but what you're doing here is basically iterating through your list multiple times because you're doing it for your i and then you're doing it for your list comprehension so this is a lot of time complexity, but it's working out and I wanted to showcase it. And then you're just checking out, like if count is more than match count, okay, we said so, like if you have a list of 10, uh, so if the count of the value is above five, then it's a majority element, you're gonna return I. And this is working out pretty well. Um, I didn't test out the time complexity literally because like, come on, uh, that's not what I'm doing here, uh, but at least we want to try this out. So if we're trying this for array 1, well, it's a 1, 115 milliseconds. Uh, if we do it to array 3, it's a 3, 120 milliseconds. And if we do it to array 4, it's none, which is pretty nice because this is telling you there's no maturity element in there. This is maybe the best perk of that. Uh, algorithm. Okay, let's go to the second code. And this is going to be a simple sorting because, and this is again the lead code team's uh, answer, and I would have never thought of that. If you sort your array with the sort algorithm, well, technically, look at this. Here you have this case scenario, right? You have five frees and four other elements. Meaning that if you go to the value, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 over 2, which is 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3 appears, okay? If you sort your algorithm, 
and you have a majority element, the majority element is always going to represent more than half the space, so your middle value is going to be equal to your majority element. This is just as easy as that. And so you just then return um, a, the array value of just half of your array size. And this is it. This this is your list. This is this is your answer. So you're going to print. I want to go too fast here. Uh, sort solution of R. And it's working out, right? Your one is here, and it's just a, like as fast as the other one. Three, maybe three is here. And if we're doing four, well, obviously. <laughs> It doesn't work because here we don't have a majority element, but it works for the lead code problem because they tell you there is uh, a majority element. Okay, this is it for the sorting solution. I don't want to stay too long on those. It's just smart concept and nothing crazy coding wise. Um, but what's interesting here is that we're going to go through my solution where I was trying to use the obvious solution of a hash table, so or dictionary for the Python instance. Uh, count is going to be equal to my um, hash table. Okay, I'm going to follow up on the iterations of every value of my array in that in that hash table, and my solution is going to be equal at the beginning to the first value of my array. So what are we doing here? Well. We are saying that my first solution is the first value of the array, and then I'm going to iterate through my array. And basically, I want to add the new value in my count uh, um, a dictionary if it's not there, or I want to increment one to the value if it's already in there. So if not, if I, sorry, not in uh, count, well, we're going to say count i equal 1. Else, count i plus equal 1. This is pretty basic, OK? And then I want to do a test, because every time I increment 1, it's a chance for me to identify a new majority element. And so what I'm doing is just saying, if count of my solu current solution is smaller than the count of my current value, then we're going to change my solution to the new value. And we do that until the end of the iteration. And in the end, we should have as a solution the good, the good uh, value here, so solve. But um, I don't want to do something where you're not sure that uh, the answer is good if, for example, it's not a majority element. So I want to add a little check. And I know it's uh, making your time complexity bigger of 1. But as we know, we can just cut through that pretty easily. So if count of solution is greater than length of array over 2, then we're going to return so. Uh, else return no majority element. Okay. Now we're going to try. My bad. I'm a little too low for you, boys. Okay. So here, let's try to print a um, first solution of R and see how it works out. I've got a problem. What is it? Dictionary object not callable. Oh my bad. I didn't even see that. And so here we are. This is working for array 1. It's working for array 2. And what about array 4? Okay, no majority element. Okay. At all 2. So it's working out here uh, just as fast as the other ones. Nothing crazy. OK, so now we're going to go into the meat and potatoes of the video, which is the Boyer-Moore algorithm. That algorithm is specifically dedicated to identifying majority elements in the list, ergo, a voting 
organization. You have more than 50% that is someone and we need to find that someone. What, and the perk of it is that it's using only a count variable. Oof, this is a little big, sorry. A count variable. Okay, that you start at zero. And it's using a solution or candidate variable which is equal to the current value of your list okay what's the concept of it well if you go through your list okay if you go through all the values in an array and you have this only one variable to follow up well what's going to happen well here your first value is going to be i so your count is going to be one in here and your solution is going to be that value right there okay and then you go to the next object and it's going to be another value okay what happens well you're going to say this is not the same value so i decrement my count and it's going to be equal to zero okay then you go to the next value and then what you're going to say is my value is zero my count is zero so my new solution is going to change and become that value okay and count equal is equal to one for that value so you're gonna tell me wait this is weird we're not counting the x here I don't understand I know but it's because that x already decremented the value before it okay so whether or not it's your majority element is doesn't matter that much because later on you might have other x's and because that x cancelled this one well the, the other x's are going to cancel all the other ones until well only x's are left and this is kind of the point like if you if every value cancel each other the majority element of the list is the only one that's going to be the leftover in the end so let's go for the code and make that maybe a little more clear so we're going to create boyamore algorithm with an array and we're going to set up our count variable and for the sake of understanding i'm going to name candidate my uh, tracking value, my tracked value, and it's going to be the first value of the array. And now, for every value in my array, I'm going to say, well, two case scenario: if my count is equal to zero, well, my new candidate is the current value, and its count is one. So, if count Okay, so candidate equal to y and um, count equal to 1. Okay, but then you have the other case scenario where, well, if your count is equal to 1 or more, well, here what you're going to do is just say if uh, candidate equal equal i okay so if your candidate is the same value as the current value being visited then you just increment your count by one but if it's not then you decrement your count by one and you properly sorry and that's all that's all for the for the algorithm And then what you're going to do, well, the other case scenario, well, if your value is above zero, well, what you're going to do is say, if it's the same value as my candidate, I increment count by one. But if it's not, then I decrement count by one. And this is basically it. By doing this and then returning your candidate you have your boyer algorithm so let's try it out let's print boyer of array and see what goes and it's a one array two it's a two array three 
it's a 3. And about array 4, it's a 7. Why? Because there's no built-in system in the Boyer-Moore algorithm to identify the fact that there is no majority element. And this algorithm, in this case scenario, is not built to identify anything that's more than the other ones. It's, identif it's, it's good to identify what's more than half of the array. Okay, it doesn't care that your element appears more than the others. It cares that your element is more than half of the elements. And it's a little detail that you need to in to make sh sure you understand. But uh, you have solutions, obviously, to do that. Like you could um, iterate multiple times with the Boyer-Moore algorithm to check out that you found the good, the real majority element. Have tests in it. Obviously, it's just a first uh, statement. Um, but at least we've got it. Uh, last thing I wanted to come across to co to check out with you is the last uh, little lead code team tweak that I found because I learned of this algorithm on a video and then I saw uh, that the, the actual answers of the lead code problem had uh, also a boy more algorithm but instead of doing this what they were doing is that you're not going to create your count here and you're going to do well your count is going to be incremented by one okay but only if your current value is equal to your candidate and so you do it here if i equal equal candidate else well it's going to be minus one and this is all this is replacing that whole like if statement before i don't really know if it's better to do it this way or not um i honestly i'm not very comfortable with those but i wanted to showcase it and i wanted to keep it so maybe i can think about it later on and at least understand it even if i don't use something i want to be able to reuse it uh here so if i use an object that exists you can see that it's working out okay uh, still pretty fine but it doesn't solve the non-existent uh, majority element problem and here we are for today so thank you and uh, just uh, keep on coding bye